Let's take a look at the process of creating a bridge supported by conventional crowns. I'm dragging in the relevant data sets into the software. We are now going to switch over to the crown and bridge module and click the add tooth button and select the relevant teeth. If we hold down the shift key and left click, then we could select multiple teeth. The tooth that's highlighted in red will be placed in the position where we click and the other teeth will be placed accordingly. I'm going to click add selected teeth as teeth chain so that we could move and manipulate the teeth together. When I want to drop the teeth into location, I hold down the shift key and left click. I can now use the editing tools and the rotation tools to fine tune the placement of the teeth. Once I have the overall placement placed, I could go to the teeth edit panel, click manipulate model, and manipulate and position any of the individual teeth, or we could resize them using the nodes, the dots attached to the widget that will stretch the teeth into any direction. So now I've positioned uh, the teeth more or less in the correct positions. And it's important to keep in mind, let's toggle them off for a second, that there's two ways of creating bridges in Blue Sky Plan. If we want to create a bridge similar to this one, then the teeth are touching each other and material needs to be added so that they are connecting and they're touching and then the software will, will unify them into a bridge. The other option is if the teeth have a separation between them, then we could design the connection using the bridge creation tool and create the bridge that way. So at this point we could switch over and use our teeth editing panel. We could use any of the editing tools to edit the teeth. So for example, we could add or remove material, hold down the shift key, use our left mouse button to add some material there. Let's undo that, let's make our tool size slightly larger and uh, do that again. Okay, we also have global geometry transform that we could use and local geometry transform that allows us to grab any location and just uh, stretch it or move it. So we could use these tools to edit the teeth. So what we could see here is that between teeth nine and 10, there is no space. The teeth are colliding slightly and between the other teeth, there is a space, even though it's a very small space, space does exist. And we'll see how we could create the bridge using the two different techniques. Let's start off by creating our crowns. We'll go to restoration design, choose conventional crown, maxilla. Make sure our model is correct, our crown is correct, and our opposing arch is selected correctly. We're then going to press the start button. We confirm the path of insertion or make any modifications by grabbing with the left mouse button the circle to rotate the arrow. And then we press next. We're going to define the proximal area, hold down the shift key and use our left mouse button and press next. The software proposes a curve and we could either uh, modify this curve or we could create our own if we want to modify the existing curve we hold down the shift key and drag with our left mouse if we want to create our own curve we could click reset and then just hold down the shift key and left click at various points along the curve and the software places and connects the dots we go around the area back to the starting point, hold down the shift and drag with the left mouse button to connect it to the starting point. If we want to make any modifications, again hold down shift and just grab and drag with your left mouse button. Okay, now we're going to press next. We are now designing the base of the crown so we could use the various sliders. We could adjust the separation for the cement 
between the underlying uh, structure and the crown. We could define how much of the crown should not have a gap. We could adjust the, the margins, the horizontal margin, the angles, the minimal thickness. And once we've made all of our changes, we go ahead and click on Next. The software allows us to cut the intersections, or we could go back and make any changes. Otherwise, we just click the Finalize button. We can now see that the software has created a new surface, the D. We can now see that the software has created a new surface. The D is for the newly designed surface. And we could check that and see that the software has now created the crown. We're going to repeat the process to turn the other teeth into crowns. So we select the relevant tooth, confirm the models, conventional crown, and press start. We're going to click Plan New Restoration. We'll run through the process flow as we did before. Path of insertion to remove undercuts. Press Next. There's no relevant approximal area now, so we're going to press Next. Software proposes a curve. We could keep it or we can make any modifications. Again, we're holding down Shift key and grabbing and dragging or just really dragging with our left mouse button. Shift and just dragging with our left mouse button. Or we could reset completely and just place the dots going around. We're then going to click on Next. Make any changes we want regarding the crown bottom and then press Next. And then finalize. So we now have two crowns designed in the software. And we have one more. Let's run through the process for the last crown. Plan your restoration. Path of insertion. Here we have the curve. Let's redraw it, demonstrate that. Let's press reset. Hold down the shift key and just place points as we go around. At the last point, we then continue to hold down shift key, our left mouse button, and drag to connect it to the first point. Press next. Make any changes to the crown bottom, and then press next. And then finalize. So we now have three crowns designed. In the list, we could see our four original teeth are still listed here. Only one of them is visible because we're not going to be creating a crown out of it. It's not relevant. And then we have our designed versions with the D in front of them, and they are visible. Okay, and everything obviously could be toggled on and off. Once we have the relevant crowns visible, then we could go ahead and design the bridge. Create bridge will make a bridge out of whichever surfaces, whichever crowns, teeth are visible. So let's go ahead and create and click Create Bridge. So as I mentioned earlier, teeth 9 and 10 are going to be connected because they're touching and the software will do a union, a union and attach them together. The other teeth we could see, if we look closely, now have these blue circles, nodes, that represent what is going to be the center of the bridge creation. If we want to move them, we could just do mouse over, they turn yellow, and just grab and drag with our left mouse button. At this point, we're just going to click Next, and we could see what the software did for us. So between 9 and 10, there is no bridge being created because they were connected to each other. And the other teeth, we now have this type of situation. What this allows us to do is if we hold down the shift key and use our left mouse button, then we can enlarge the area, the surface of, connect of the connection. Or we could just grab any of the dots without holding down the shift key, left clicking, and just moving an individual dot. If we hold down the shift key and grab this middle ring, any of the nodes in the middle ring, then we could move its positioning. If we hold down the control key instead of the shift key with the middle ring, then we could enlarge uh, the diameter of the middle ring.
Once we are done making any modifications to the bridge connections, we click the next button. We can now use any of the editing tools to make modifications to the bridge smooth to deform, add or remove material, and we could go ahead and edit the bridge. Once we're done, we click finalize. We could go to the surfaces panel, and here we have our bridge. So let's turn off our other surfaces and take a look at the bridge. All of this could be exported from the software.